It took me almost two years of making videos on YouTube to reach 4,000 subscribers. But in the last few weeks, my channel just exploded, going from 4,000 to 40,000 subscribers and getting more than 2 million views in less than 20 days. Now, this is supposed to be the dream moment, the one you've been working so hard for. But this ended up being some of the most stressful weeks of my life. Because everybody wants to tell you how to blow up on YouTube. But what actually happens when you do? This is the story of what happened during the last weeks, and while I didn't buy a Lambo, the money part was definitely interesting. So the first thing I learned is that if you grow your following by 10x or 100x, now 10x or 100x more people will try to hack you. Since I started to get views, I got flooded with at least two or three emails per day that looked very enticing. Sponsorship opportunities and collaborations, but these people were just trying to hack my channel. Usually it's pretty easy to recognize scammers, because their emails would come from domains like wp.pl here. And buenos dias? Come on, I'm Italian, not Spanish, at least do the effort. But in this case, Elliot here reached out to promote a game, and his email cacao.com looked like a legit website. So I replied and they sent back this email where I would find more info on the contract in this zip file. And once you download the supposed contract, it turns out to be a 600 megabyte .scr file, which is a Windows screen saver file that basically allows the hacker to take control of your machine. And so I double checked my two-factor authentication, I created a new password, I checked for leaks on have I been pwned, and since I've been using the same Gmail address for over 14 years, God knows who has that address, so I moved the channel to a completely brand new one and will keep that private. And let's not forget that anytime you sign up to some random website or subscribe to a newsletter and you accept those terms of service, you might be giving consent for your data to be sold and resold by hundreds of data brokers, resulting in spam calls and unsolicited emails. Yeah, this is the exact moment where you wonder, how the hell did these guys get my email address? And as you might have guessed, this starts to become even more of a problem as you start to grow a following. And this is where the sponsor of this video comes in, Incogni. Because yes, you can contact these data brokers yourself and ask to delete your information. But first of all, you need to understand who has your information and there's hundreds of these companies. And secondly, you need to go through a complex procedure that involves back and forth of legal documents and this is a procedure that is different for every data broker. But with Incogni, I literally signed up to the service chose which data I want to get removed, and immediately they found 75 data brokers who were selling my data. The system got to work automatically, and five minutes later my data was already removed from one broker. Incogni is giving away to the beautiful viewers of this channel 100 spots to sign up with a 20% discount, and you can do it with the link that you find in the description. So the first lesson is that the more your audience grows, the more hackers will try to take it from you. But I know what you're really here for. The money. In the whole of 2022, my YouTube channel generated a grand total of $469.57, which to me at the time felt like so much money. I could finally pay off the microphone and the gear that I bought, I could finally pay for my subscription to editing software or to Epidemic Sound, which is the place where I get my music from. But now, just in the first few weeks of 2023, I made a total of $6,650 just in AdSense revenue from YouTube. Now, I know what you think, I should be out in Bali or in some club popping bottles. But as a contemporary poet said, more money, more problems. Because this is where I realized that in a span of a few weeks, my channel went from a side project to a real business. And unfortunately, real businesses need to pay taxes. And so I froze all payments from YouTube, I kept the money in my AdSense account, and now I need a company. So far I've been working mainly as an employee, so I never really had a company before. I spent the entire nights researching company structures, tax optimization and accountants. Plus I moved here to London just a few months back and I don't really know how things work here. Should I open a limited company? Should I be a freelancer? How do I write off things? And if this whole mess wasn't enough, I even found a hole in the British law, where basically since I'm here on an employee visa, the government doesn't really know how to treat this business. So there I was, in the span of a few weeks, I went from nothing to spending an entire afternoon and $700 to speak to the UK government. Things that were not even remotely in my mind a few weeks back. And speaking of money, as my views were skyrocketing, I realized I was leaving money on the table. And what I learned is that the only thing you need to do is just listen. It might sound totally crazy, but if you browse through the comments, people will just tell you what they want. 
Many people wanted to learn how I make and edit these videos. So I created a Google form asking for some questions. I gathered an email list and now I'm building a course on exactly how I make my videos and I can send it to this email list. Other comments were asking for what gear I used. So I opened an Amazon affiliates account. I created my own gear page on Kit and put all my links into beacon.ai. And now I have also affiliate revenue. Because once you have an audience, you don't need an MBA degree. Just listen to what people are curious about and give it to them. Now, there is one thing that I already knew would happen, but I really underestimated it. And that is sponsorships. As the channel grew, I was getting more and more requests from brands and companies to sponsor my video. And I was completely clueless. How much do I charge? Am I getting ripped off by this company? How much do other YouTubers charge? Is 60 seconds for a sponsorship too much? Should I even promote this product in the first place? What the f is a view cap? I knew I had to learn and I had to do it fast. But public information on this is very limited, so I knew I needed to find insiders. I spent an entire night on forums and Reddit, and finally I found a Discord community of creators that were discussing sponsorship rates, and I took pages of notes on typical pricing structure, what are good CPMs based on your audience location, and so many things I didn't even know existed. Because when you start out, all you need is to make good videos. That's it. But if you want to treat this as a real business, you also need to learn how to negotiate with brands to get your fair share. You have to learn sales to convince companies and marketing managers that you are the best men for the job. But the biggest thing of all for me has been the mindset shift that comes with this growth. Because YouTube is an exponential game. A so 9 to 5 career is a straight line. You grow a bit every year and maybe there are even some predefined steps. But YouTube is the exact opposite of that. I spent almost two years working constantly with basically nothing to show for. In December, I set my 2023 goals of making 200,000 subscribers and generating $200,000 in revenue from YouTube and other products. And a few weeks ago, these goals were looking massively ambitious and scary. But now they look not only achievable, but maybe even a bit too small when you're exposed to the real power of exponential growth. It's like using Flash when you're in the cave in Pokemon. This reference is for the real pros, by the way. After you experience exponential growth once, I promise you that you won't see the world in the same way. When I started making videos, I was basically a nobody. Yes, I had a nice job at a big tech company and that helped with some initial credibility, but in YouTube land, that doesn't mean anything. I was constantly reaching out to other creators for collaboration or to brands for potential ideas. The result was nothing. And the incredible thing of this change is that now not only when I reach out to people, they are getting back to me, I'm getting opportunities left and right. From podcasts to collaboration, consulting, and even investing in some startups and projects. And while judging somebody from their follower counts seems a bit sad, I think it actually makes some sense because that number represents where you are on the journey. And depending on where you are on the journey, your perspective, your daily life and your problems are massively different. And the actual story of how I managed to go from 4,000 to 40,000 subscribers in just a few weeks is a very interesting one. And to hear it, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel. And in the meantime, here's another video that you might enjoy.